Hello everyone, I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to discuss figure arts, awards, and the finale of Ultraman Decker. But before all that, Buster, how you doing? I am... I think I'm okay. I'm about to start college again tomorrow, so we'll see. Start again? Like, I mean, semester. You... New semester. New semester. Okay, okay. I was <laughs> like, you, you completely switch majors or something, bud? What's going on? No. Just, yeah, just kind of vibing. I'm eating goldfish right now. <laughs> oh, sick. Yeah. What, what is your major, by the way? I don't think I've ever asked. Uh, I uh, d digital broadcast journalism. Although I might be soon. I gotta like. Oh, sick. Yeah. That's a good, but that's like a good general degree to start out going for in college these days. Yeah, especially because it's basically part of my YouTube job to freaking report on digital media, and I do, I do it on mm -hmm. this podcast. So freaking, why not? You are the digital media. Exactly. Uh, how are you doing, Mr. Accuminator? I'm okay. I'm almost over this cold I've been dealing with for about a week now. I've just kind of got, like, a funny nose at the moment. Oh, yeah, like, but, literally, you uh, got sick the minute we recorded last week's episode where I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, though I definitely don't think I caught it from you, because my <laughs> nephew had been sick, and then my mom was sick, I and see. then I got sick. So... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how that whole thing worked. And there's just a ton of stuff going on, going around right now, because we're, like, right at the start of flu season. Yeah. So, fucking mask up, wash your hands, and take your vitamins, kids. Yeah. Do the things. And also, subscribe to Modular Media. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just been getting through. Uh, this is probably going to be the busiest week of the month for me because i've got to do a lot to uh prep for next month's videos as well as get this week's video out yeah so just a just a ton of like work i gotta get done this week on top of my normal routine which uh, the routine i set out for myself at the start of this year already has me pretty busy on a weekly average so uh -huh. it's uh it's gonna be a lot of go 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 uh until probably next wednesday but uh i'm i'm, I'm ready i'm willing yeah, it's nice to see you, like, freaking be more active about, like, just everything in life. Because I know for a while you've kind of been, like, a bit, like, late resting on your laurels, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. So it's just nice to see you, like, just out there. Yeah, I, I've I've really been thinking and reflecting on that lately, too. I, I really feel like something just snapped in me at the end of December, where I was like, enough is a fucking enough. We gotta get all this shit done. We gotta, we about to go harder than ever, ever before. Action on every floor. Yeah, and actually I should, because my, I, I did write a script, but I just, I need to write up more, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, you gotta remember, my, my videos that I'm doing now, I don't really write scripts. I write, like, bullet points, and I read those over a couple times before I start shooting. And then I just shoot for, like, 30 minutes, and whatever I get is the video. Yeah, like, I, I'm more, for lack of a better word, controlled chaos. Yeah. But, uh, that's, that's enough about us. Why don't you, uh, go ahead and support us? Hey. Uh, give this video a like, comment down below, subscribe and ring the bell in order to enable notifications so you get every episode of Twit and the other podcasts we do here at Modular Media delivered right to your inbox. Of course, there's this show. There's the No Prize Podcast where myself and Boingo Writer deal with technical difficulties as we try <laughs> to discuss comic books every week. There's, uh, Components where we hang out and talk about whatever comes up with a guest sometimes. And there's Analytical Fanboys, which is about to make its triumphant return to talk about Chainsaw Man, because we like being topical, apparently. It's not even that topical. The anime's already over. Yeah, but it's still, like, the... the currently big and hot anime i don't feel like there's been a there's been a anime from the the new season that's really caught on yeah. just yet maybe trigon taking its place yeah, no. trigon oh trigon will surely take its place as long as it's not total dog shit yeah it's, I, i've been hearing good things anyway this isn't the anime cast this is a toku cast let's talk about yeah fucking follow the twitter at the modular media follow the tumblr modular media and join the subreddit r slash modular media okay news time everybody hey. And we got we got a little, little little snippet of Godzilla news to start off, which is that uh, Bandai announced they're doing a new prestige figure line starting in December of this year called the Movie Monster Series Kimi na Kimi Wama. No, it's Kiwami. 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 It's Kiwami Stream. Oh goodness! Like I really need to rewatch some Gaim, I guess. Yeah, I mean I know it because I've been delving into Yakuza. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so movie monster series extreme feet featuring Yuji Sakai, whoever that is, I guess like he's the sculptor or the designer yeah. or something. Um, and the first one is going to be a 1989 style Godzilla that is fairly big, uh, has, has some special colors to the scales maybe comes with some buildings i don't know it's not really clear maybe it's just maybe that diorama is just for promotional purposes but it's it's coming out at the end of december so this this figure is like almost an entire year away right now and it's going to be 102 dollars usd um this looks nice this is a really nicely sculpted godzilla it's one of my favorite godzilla designs but it's a glorified statue i don't care about this it's okay i'm pretty sure like Matthew yeah. muscles will like it though Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I would not be surprised if Jobby the Hong one gets one to put on his mantle or something. But uh, let's 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 move right along to the Ultra news, where we've got a new Figure Arts announcement. SH Figure Arts Ultra Man Mebius is happening. Buster, who the hell is Mebius? Okay, Mebius is one of the most critically acclaimed Ultra series. Uh, he was a he was a he was one of the last Ultra series before they switched to a bunch of movies and then the new generation line. So this was like oh. before zero. Um, and he was like an anniversary. So this is this is like just post TGD, huh? Yeah, post TGD, post Nexus, post Max. Uh, so and this was one of the first Tokusatsu anniversary shows that they had. Re really? Yeah, this was a basically based on the Showa era of Ultraman. Uh, the basically maybe yes, like from the three episodes I've seen, which I really like. I have the DVD set, but like I need to watch more. But like from what I've seen. Uh, basically, it's like all the Ultraman from show is like, maybe yes, go do a thing. And it's kind of like a Ultraman for like, it's kind of like trying to go back to the roots of Ultraman and like the thematic core and why it resonated with so many. And I really like mm. and a lot of people like when this configure got announced, a lot of people on my timeline popped the hell off because maybe this is again, one of the most critically acclaimed Ultra shows. Uh, so it's really cool to see it get figure hearts. Nice. So this is this is well deserved then. And I will say I do like this design. It's it's not gonna be like my favorite ultra design ever, but uh I, I like how simplistic it is. I like that it has a more burgundy-ish red than most Ultraman go for. And I like how the color timer is embedded in the chest rather than being on top. Yeah, this was supposed to be uh, like that's, a, that's a, nice a modernization change. of old ultras is what they're trying to go mm. for. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I'll be picking this up anytime soon because I don't currently have any plans to watch Mebius, but I'm very happy for the Mebius fans out there to get their boy. And, uh, hey, now that I know that show's apparently really good, maybe I'll watch it sometime this year if I can manage that and the polls allow me to. I mean, like, it's not on Tubi yet, it's just on DVD, but I, it'll get on Tubi soon. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are, there are always other yeah. ways. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, there's a uh, there's special ways for special people, as I like to say on my channel. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's let's move on to some more current Ultraman news, which is that Shin Ultraman has been nominated for a ton of Academy Awards Woo! in Japan. Um, basically, um, seven all of like the biggest categories this film is nominated for: Best Picture, Best Director, Best Cinematography, Best Editing, Best Lighting, Best Art Direction. Best Sound Recording, Best New Actor. Basically, the only categories I could think of in a typical award show it's not nominated for are Best Lead Actor, Best Supporting Actor, and Best uh, Female Actor. Mm. Um, so, Shin Sweep is entirely possible, especially because this was like one of the most popular Japanese box office hits last yeah, year. Yeah, it was that and One Piece film Red, and you know, Shin Ultraman I think has a bit more critical backing uh, than that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I am like, I really hope it gets, I I hope it gets sound recorded because I love the OST of Shin Ultraman. I've been listening to it like a bunch since the film came, since I first saw the film, and it's like, man, mm. it, this goes hard. And it's like, well, you'd always like I. Film. I would be super happy if it won any of these awards because I think they're well deserved. But I am most pulling for it to win best editing. Like I, I don't know what it's up against, but I have to imagine there's nothing with as frantic yet tight editing as this movie. Yeah, had. I love the editing. Like again, like it's like it takes that Shin Godzilla like approach of like kind of editing conversations in like these exciting ways. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know other films do that, but like I feel like that's emphasized even further with the Shin film. Yeah. Yeah. So best of luck to the entire Shin Ultraman crew. Uh if word of it winning any of these awards makes it back to me, we'll we'll cover that as well. 
But uh, right now, it's just kind of a, hey, isn't that cool kind of thing. Uh, And speaking of, hey, isn't that a thing, uh, Memorial Edition Ultraman Decker D Flasher is happening, everybody. It's a Memorial Edition. You know the drill by this point. It's a little bit bigger, so it's the same size as it is in the actual show, and it comes with all the cards. Yeah, you get a d- you get freaking Hajino card. That's cute. Yeah. So if you missed out on the D-Flasher and you don't want to you don't want to buy the existing ones that are rotting away on the in-stock pages of many online stores right now, here's an option to pre-order one, yeah, I guess. I kind of I don't know how I feel about memorial editions for shows that just ended. Like with like say Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, cuz it's like I um, guess in memorial of it ending even though there's still a bunch of content for the show. Yeah, though, as we'll discuss later, there are some times where I feel it's highly appropriate. But uh, for now, let's let's talk about uh, stuff that is yet to come for Ultraman Decker. Um, Ultraman Decker Final Journey to Beyond got a new trailer and some new details about the movie were revealed, including the fact that the new Ultraman in the movie, Ultraman Dennis, is a lady person. I thought we already knew that. Nope, that well, I, was that was not information I was privy to. I literally said, oh, they better, they're like, from the leaks, they better not fridge Dennis, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's cool. Yeah. It looks like a movie. Yeah, it looks neat. <laughs> It'll be a nice epilogue, because, like, a little, like, I do kind of feel like the, like, the, like, I, well, I, lo- spoilers, I like the Decker finale, I feel like there's not, like, too much conclusive to it. I feel like this will be, like, a night to give. I don't know. Hmm. Well, we'll get more today. I could I could argue with that with you about that, but uh, my main thing with this trailer is just they don't show anything that indicates that. But I gotta ask, and, and spoilers for the Decker finale for those of you who haven't watched it. Over under, you think Kanada is getting his powers no, back? He literally transforms in this trailer. No, he Wait, doesn't. He doesn't. This this trail this trailer is all about Dennis. There's no footage of Canada transforming. Well, like they show this, they show the suit of Decker in the trailer. I don't know. I assume that might be a flashback, but maybe I'm just a crazy You're asshole. Crazy. <laughs> like, I don't like. Well, damn they it. did it in the Trigger movie. They're gonna do it here. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Let's talk about peak fiction. We're not we're not talking about Gokaiju yet. We'll talk about Kamen Rider Fies. Hey. Yeah, SH Figure Arts Sinchoku Seho Common Rider Fies was announced. Uh, which, if you're not familiar, Sinchoku Seho is the the line where they go back and they redo an existing character in Figure Arts from scratch. And Fies has yet to get one until just now. They announced it with a single teaser image of him doing his his standard uh, taking a shit pose, and uh, it looks good. It looks like Fies. But I gotta admit, it doesn't look like a huge improvement over the original figure, because I looked at some uh, stock images of the original figure after this got announced, and the only real improvement from the original figure, to me, looks to be that they made the uh, elbow and knee joints a little less gappy. Well, that's probably good, because figure photographer, you want to get fives in the... Mm-hmm. And you want to have it more accurate to the actual suit. That's what Sinchoku Seho really aims to do, make it look like it's an actual person in a suit. Um, and I think the, the metallic finish on the silver parts might be a little shinier on this version, but, uh, overall, like, I like Fize's suit, but I don't know if I'd pay Sinchoku Seho dollars for it, because these, these tend to start off at, like, $80. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't go for it. I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if I'll go for it either, but it's nice, because it's Fize's 20th anniversary. Oh, I completely didn't know that. Let's talk about a figure arts thing I do know. Uh, SH Figure Arts Common Rider Tycoon Ninja Form has had its full pre-order solicitations with all the pretty photos announced, and right off the back of that, Team Rider said, oh hey, that's a Premium Bandai exclusive, we'll release that in the US for you guys. Say it with me now, everybody. Where's the Where's fucking the show? Fucking show? <laughs> oh. Again, I wasn't supposed <laughs> <laughs> No, it's fine, it worked fine. Uh, yeah, I... I, I've all, we've talked to Def about the, how good the Geats figure arts look. They all look great, uh, and and this is one we had seen at that initial batch of reveals. Um, so it's nice to see some more detailed photos of it. I like that they actually pointed out, like, hey, you can part swap with Geats and Buffa, and you can do an entry form. Um, but uh, honestly, 
I have nothing to say except it looks really good. Kind of silly that arguably the main character of the show is a premium Bandai exclusive, and even more silly that Team Rider is releasing it when we don't have, have official access or to the, the show. Or the Geats figure art. That's like my main pro. That's like, okay, fine. Like, if we're going to sell these things about the show, complain about that so many times, where's the Geats figure art for us to buy? <laughs> where's the main... It's a general release, so I think they're just like, oh, that'll be as affordable everywhere for everybody if they want to order it through Japanese yeah. sites. I, I do not like how the Geats figurettes are being at all. It's bad. Don't like. It's not yeah, optimal. It's, it's kind of like, I guess they're not revising the gimmick items, but they're revising the figure arts. <laughs> well, you know what is even more optimal since you bring up gimmick oh, items? God. This thing. So, the uh, DX, Kamen Rider, Nodge Sparrow, and Lopo ID cores have been announced. And these are going to be promotional items that you get with Televicoon, the fucking magazine that all the scans come from. Why does Bad Die hate? I don't know. I mean, like, this is. Again, I. I don't know how many times we can go over this with the ID course, but like, yes, they don't do anything unique in the drivers, except make the one noise that they can all make, because they just flip a switch in the driver, but the the weird, like, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, idiosyncratic ways they've been releasing these has been just... So annoying, and it's so obvious that these could have been the Gashapon toy this year, and Bandai would have made incredible bank. And this one is by far the worst case of it yet, because the fact that these are fucking promotional items with a magazine um, just sends the message to me that, like, hey, these characters aren't important, they're only going to be here for one arc, don't get attached to them. Because I feel like if they were important, you were gonna, you would actually promote their shit. You would make them like unique race buckles that would come with these ID cores. And they haven't had the unique race buckles in the show, so uh, it's and like even it's yeah, a mess. Even then, just the toy addict part of it. Like I think the the idea of the Geats driver is all the customization, customization, customization. And I feel like the ID cores are a key part of that. So when you don't give me the customization, you take away like one third, one third of the customization. That that's not cool, man. That just makes me want, not want to buy the toy. It's very odd. Like it is going to be a nightmare for anybody to collect Geats's toy line after the show stops oh, airing, or if just nobody will buy them and they're cheap on Taka's website. <clears throat> Or maybe there will be, like, a Memorial Edition Geats driver that comes with the the two basic raised buckles and all the ID cores. But even if they do that, that's going to be, like, really stupidly premium Bandai expensive. I hate Bandai. I, I think they're shit sometimes. Um, I'm glad they lost the Power Rangers uh, license in America. I've been, like, trying to plot out a review of a Bandai toy for next month, and I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give spoilers for my channel, but you know it, Buster. And, like, that combined with a lot of the news this week has me really down on Bandai as a company. Legit. Like, <sighs> get good, man. There's so many of your contemporaries are handling a lot of the things you're fucking up way better than you, and it just makes you look worse by comparison. It doesn't help that they basically uh, have a monopoly on the big three tokusatsu shit. Yeah, like, you gotta you gotta get with the times, man. You gotta pull a Hasbro and start licensing that out, and just 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 do what Hasbro does. Say, hey, like, there's this well, specific do do thing that. that we do with our stuff that you can't do with with your toys. Like, Hasbro says, anybody can make toys of the Transformers if they pay us money and sign this agreement, but those toys can't transform. They have to be action figures of the Transformers or, like, little die-cast cars well, of the old. that with these little chibi... F it's that, like, my problem isn't really the outsourcing, it's really just how they're releasing product. So, yeah. I don't know. It's a weird... It's, they gotta get better release... It feels like the pandemic really screwed up their releases. Uh, well, let's talk about something kind of, uh, I don't know if positive, but interesting when it comes to Geats. So, in the next time preview for this week's episode, there was a little tease of a new character that's coming, and uh, that character uh, has had their casting announced. Ayaka Namiki uh, will be portraying, uh, I don't think it has the name of the character Mysterious here. Mysterious Girl. Uh, j yeah, just Mysterious 
girl who looks like she spends too much time in uh oh uh, what's the what's that area is Akihabara. She looks like an Akihabara girl. Yeah, I mean, me. like everyone's comparing her to Azu because of like the freaking pose <laughs> and the long like the dyed hair strip. Um, True, but that's also just like an archetype in Japanese yeah. media. And like, hey, it's a Takahashi. Like you, you could, you could fucking say Azu is like similar to uh, the woman of the beginning from Gaim, if you wanted to go I in guess. that vein. But uh, yeah, no, uh, it's a, it's a new character coming. It's a very young actor. She's only fifteen years old. Um, so it's it's gonna be interesting to see how that shakes shakes things up with with all the new cast members coming in and expanding Geats's story. Yeah, recently. and she looks like to be the companion because everyone else, like Ace and freaking Kawa have their companion. She looks to be the companion to Neon. So you mean the sponsor? Yeah, sponsor yeah. That's interesting because I've I fought for I fought since the the last arc that her dad was meant to be her sponsor and he was just trying to do it anonymously. Well, until maybe now. she has two sponsors. That's always a possibility. Mm-hmm. Or maybe she's Lopo's sponsor. Oh, that's her. Or maybe she's no one's sponsor and she's an entirely different kind of character. Know. We'll find yeah. the next week or the next next week. <laughs> the next next week. Next week on Common Rider Geats. Wait till next week. <laughs> uh but uh we do have a little bit of uh toy news just to wrap up this this whole japanese toku uh news section which is that there is going to be a set of finals uh tying together hideki ano shin universe of like weird uh, metallic color variations of the basic kids finals for Shin Godzilla, the Evangelion Rebuild, Shin Ultraman, and Shin Kamen Rider. Me and the boys. <laughs> That's a big me and the boys image. Like <laughs> That does have such me and the boys imagery, the fucking image that came with this announcement. I didn't even realize yeah. that. I love it. Uh, uh t- tag yourself, I'm uh, Godzilla. <laughs> I guess I'm Kamen Rider because I like code. <laughs> oh boy um but now we're going to be moving into the uh the sentai portion of the news because we do have a little bit of sentai news this week and by that i mean a lot of bit of one particular kind of news all the fucking first wave of king Oger retail toys got announced we got the the basic figure line we got all the basic role play toys we even got a demo video for the changer which as we all suspected is a sword weapon changer thing that's basically like a, a mixture of the swords from Saber with a bop it. And uh, there's a shield you can plug into it to make it like a, a dual sword staff thing. There's a buckle that's just a glorified hunk of plastic because it doesn't tie into the gimmick at all. Um, and uh, yeah, this all looks fine. This looks serviceable. I have no interest in buying any of it, though. Uh, depending on how the show works, I might get the action figures because I did buy the Don Brothers action figures. We'll see. I do want black. Mm-hmm. Black black size is the best suit in like the whole Although these make these these like seeing these figures make me realize man, they really didn't put a lot of paint on these. Like not just the figures. Yeah, they look really cheap, honestly. Well, it's not even just I'm just talking about the suit suits because people were like kinda complaining about like, oh, they didn't put a lot of suits on the suits so they can make more accurate kids figures. And like well, the suits have, like, this kind of layered, different texture yeah. fabric look that comes off in the show imagery, but in these figures, you can't tell it at all. They just look like they're solid colors. Yeah, like, I think um, that's what makes them stand out, like, look better. In- and I, I still like this. Yeah, uh, I, I, I forget what, uh, what the name structure for these guys is gonna be, but I hope the Red Ranger, uh, gets a figure art at least, because that'll probably have a lot of the, the detail I feel like is missing uh, from Red's these. Red's name is Kuwata, um, Kuwagata Oger with King and his bike. Ah, is King I do like that the Zord is like a bike. Like I can, yeah, there's there's a bike toy, and that's the only way you can get the Red Ranger right now is with that uh, bike toy, which is a little bit annoying for people who aren't interested in bike toys. But eh, yeah. what are you gonna do? Um, I will say, uh, anybody who's interested in the Changer. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Lightning Fig PR, Living Ranger Key, Joshman. Uh, don't buy this initial release. Wait, because they're going to do a memorial edition, and it's going to be the actual size of the blade in the show. 
Like, this is fairly big. This is bigger than most sword toys Bandai makes, but it's still a lot stubbier than the one in the show. And that's why I say, like, yeah, it's weird that we get Memorial Editions right after the show now, but in cases like this, it makes sense, because they can't sell a big-ass blade to uh, kids. And we also get some new looks at the mech. Um, um, I do think, like, uh, we saw, it in, as suspected, we saw it in this week's Dodd Bros, more on that later. But yeah, it, lo- it looks way better. In the, I like it, the suit. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that in a minute. Um, also, there's a demo video of how the, the sword works, if you want to see those sounds and get spoilers for the transformation. Yeah. I do think I kind of accidentally predicted it, because one, when I, one day I had an idea for a common other transformation called, Who's the King? I'm the King. Who's the... Like, it's a standby sound. And that there's kind of mm. some, some similar phrasing, like, You are a king, or something like that. So I'm like... It's it's you are the king, you are the, and then you are the yeah, king again. That's pretty cool. That, that's motivational, man. That's motivation. Mm-hmm. We we stand our based short king poggers Who's here poggers? on Twit. Where where are you getting these names from? You've never heard of poggers I know, before. Like, there's like people like pogging out, but like that, that that makes it sound like you're talking about a person named Pogger. It's it's like a definition for a state of being like based in cringe. It was a it's a twit it's a long dead twitch meme. I, I, I don't know. I get, we're we're on two different. So let's move on to the net powers news. How are you the one that's confused about memes? You're the zoomer. I don't like every meme. <laughs> sure. Okay. All right, Power Rangers news time, everybody. Dino Fury Season 2 got nominated for a GLAAD Award, which, if you're not aware, that's like the LGBTQ movie, uh, media awards. It's nice to see it and Owl House again, the same thing, when both are about to get probably... Yeah. I mean, Owl House is going to end soon, and Dino Fury is no more, so... Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it is up for outstanding kids and family programming, specifically in relation to uh, Izzy and Fern's relationship, um, which uh, is interesting. I would say I'm rooting for it, but n- I've not seen anybody say what it's up against. So I don't know if there's like another uh, thing that I think did that better this year than well, Dino Owl Fury. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. That is tough. Yeah, both are pretty good. Because, like, Owl House is good, but we haven't real, We never really got into uh, Amity and Luz having, like, a full-on relationship. Yeah, been cute. Like, they're together, but we don't see them doing, like, normal relationship stuff because of the plot of the show having to move at a rapid pace now. It's weird. I'm pulling for Dino Fury is what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, we have some updates regard. I don't know oh. what happened. I just you got okay? disconnected. Oh, okay. There was like a huge pause there, and I and I was just trying to let it play out, playing chicken. I thought I was playing chicken with you, but then you like dropped out and immediately came back into the call I for me. Know. Point is, cool. I hope more Power Rangers can get in and have good rep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the Excuse serious me. stuff now. Yes, okay, we have some updates regarding Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always, because there was a lot of speculation going on last week, even during our own podcast, because there's one shot from the uh, the little behind-the-scenes article on the special that features the Green Ranger suit being filmed, and we were speculating what is going on with that, and we now def- have definitive confirmation from Bat in the Sun, uh, who, if you're not aware, we're basically JDF's personal film studio for like the last few years of his life. They did other things, and they did other things before then, but like I mostly knew them as the guys that did every single JDF project from like Super Mega Force onward. Um but uh so they worked very closely with him. They a lot of them knew him personally. Uh and they clarified for everybody that JDF is not in the 30th anniversary special at all. Um, Obviously, it's a stunt double in the ranger suit, uh, and he was asked to return, but he had declined. And right after this news came out, I saw a lot of people saying something I had completely forgotten about, which was like, um, right up until his death for like the back of 2022, he was saying at a lot of conventions that he was done with Power Rangers after the uh, the fan film he was working on, he wanted to move on to different yeah. things. Um, 
And I've, I also saw a lot of people saying that and then immediately speculating, did he get asked to return him because he wasn't made the star of the special? He decided to, like, uh, step away from Power Rangers. But I don't think it's anything, like, JDF was an egotist, but I don't think it was anything that simple. I think it was just that, like, he was approaching middle age and he was probably going, like, oh, my entire life has been Power Rangers and a little bit of MMA, maybe I should start doing other yeah, things. Uh, um, there's, there's a lot to dissect. I'm not the one to do it, frankly. Uh, yeah, I don't mm-hmm. think neither of us are, so... Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of sad, because I was hoping he at least 80 yard something. But uh, So at the very least, the special will at least be in mm-hmm. memoriam at the minute. Yeah, they could always use, like, archive audio of him if that's just a flashback, but... Uh... Um, I, I'm, I'm still kind of into the fan theory that either one of the, uh, the spare, uh, Mighty Morphin cast members is going to become the new Black Ranger or JJ is going to come back from the past. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll just, we got like a couple months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but we also got a tweet, uh, by Amy Jo Johnson, uh, s- clarifying that, uh, she did not, uh, come back for the special because she was also offered to be in it and she, uh, declined because she wasn't interested in what was offered, but she does have some 30th anniversary plans in store. And this led a lot of people to speculate and go like, oh, she's being petty and blah 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 this this fueled the fire of a lot of people who for some reason still have a hate boner for cat as a character um but uh honestly this this is par for the amy joe johnson like she seems to only tangentially want to be known as a power ranger anymore and she seemed like that for as long as i've been in the fandom like one of the first things i ever asked somebody who was into Power Rangers and the online fandom longer than I was, was like, has Amy Jo Johnson ever done conventions before? And they were like, mm, a couple times, but it's long been rumored since that she didn't have a good experience, and she kind of hates the fandom now because of that. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't really care. It's their decision? Their decision. I'm glad they did it on their own terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, like, it, this, is, this is an old topic, but People get get over your hate boners for cat. That that storyline is long over. It's like it's like fucking talking about Edge, Lita, and Matt Hardy in in the year twenty twenty two. Nobody cares anymore. <sighs> anyway, uh, let's talk about Cosmic Fury My because we've gotten a topic. bunch more images. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, a bunch more images of those suits have come out courtesy of the actors uh and their instagrams and uh we actually get to see what the suits look like under studio lighting similar to what they will probably be filmed on in for the actual show and they look a lot better they still don't look great but they look a lot yeah, better expected. also we got some like freaking javi robot arm huh <laughs> yeah uh some of chance perez's uh photos show him uh playing his weapon uh, Treating his weapon like it's a guitar, which is really fun. I hope that happens in the actual show. Um, but also, this was the first time a lot of people noticed about his suit that he has this weird kind of armor on his arm that none of the other characters do. And there's even a shot going around of him out of the suit with that still attached. And that's led a lot of people to speculate. Um is something going to happen to Javi? Is he getting a robot arm? What what's going on? Uh, I would speculate, because if you look at this thing, it's not like a full appendage, and there's no, like, CGI, uh, green screen or blue screen, uh, material to it. Um, I think it's probably something similar to, like, the, uh, the cyber sleeves that the kids have in Transformers Earth Spark. Could be. I, I was more thinking, like, it's a reference because the Rhea Soldier armor has, the, like, the arm sleeve. That's probably, and I, I just wish more of the suits had the arm sleeves, so. Yeah, it might be, but, like, again, there's that photo of him having it without the rest of the costume on, and somebody also pointed out, uh, between the, uh, the upper and lower arm piece, there's some connective tubing that looks very similar to Lord Zed's mm. tubes. Interesting. So, big old, big old enigma there, but, uh, for now, 
Uh, I'll just say it looks interesting, and I like the suits a lot better than I used to, but I still agree that they needed something on the uh, the mid-torso to tie them well, together yeah, a little like better. That's my big issue. Like, they're, like, they're not, they're not going to be any time, even with the chest, they're not going to be like my, my favorite suits, but like it's a fine first step if you're going to, if this is the direction Power Rangers is apparently mm-hmm. going to go. I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to wait for the show to come out and watch it. And then, yeah. As we said last week, there have been worse American yeah. original suits. Um, even then, like, mm. and again, if people, for everyone tweeted about the freaking Titanium Ranger and Jungle Fury suits, those were Plex. Those are basically Japanese suits that weren't in the freaking Japanese show. Because uh, show, they have the same designers. I, I know that everyone is aware of this, and that really shouldn't matter, but like, I don't know. I just like mentioning, I feel like it makes things... Mm. Well, uh, that's that's pretty much all there is to say about that. So our final piece of news for this week is that just today, uh, Lightning Fig PR uncovered a bunch of new listings for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection within retailer internal systems, uh, which looks to be um, Wave 15, a new deluxe, the next two remaster figures, and possibly a roleplay item, maybe a zap. Uh... Yeah, so basically here we have uh, three uh, standalone figures, which are F211 PRG Landsbro, uh, F8212 PRG Lake City, F8214 PRG Leesport, and then we have Deluxe F8210 PRG Deluxe Oldsmer, and then we have Remastered, uh, F7391 PRG 30th Lester, <laughs> F7392 PRG 30th Lost Creek, and uh, an expensive item uh, speculated to be about $150, uh, F7363 PRG Sun City. Um as usual with the uh, code names, people are going to speculate like crazy on these. I have absolutely no idea what they could be because I am I am I'm into toys, but I'm not into toys to be bothered enough about yeah. code names. Even that, I'm sure they're just random uh, code names. They don't have any significance. Yeah, uh, like the only thing we can really identify is hey, more remasters are coming, and we already yeah, kind of knew like, that. I mean, just- the next wave of remasters are coming. I think the only thing I can confi- I think yeah. I'm confident on, I think Sun City is the Delta Megazord. It could be the Delta Megazord. It could also be that White Tiger Zord. Oh, yeah, leaked. there was a White Tiger Zord. Uh, there's a White Tiger thing. I, I, although, like, from what I've seen of Zap, mm. they like doing... They did They did MMPR. They did Dragon Zord. I think if they want to, like... Just my, OC, my brain wants the formula to follow with, like, Astro, Delta, then they'll do Tiger and maybe Thunder. I, I just think, I don't know, maybe, mm-hmm. again, could just be my brain. Yeah, Tiger and, and Thunder, and you know, oh man, you know what would make me so happy for them to do after Tiger what? and Thunder? Uh, B-Squad and oh. SWAT. I mean, like... And then and then you can do an NPR Season 3, and then you can do another Disney, or, or you could do, like, a Neo Saban. I think the only Neo Saban Zords I really want are the Ghost Sager Zords. But then again, that's just me, I don't really, mm-hmm. like... I'd like to see them put more articulation in Shinkeno. See, I'm just a salty bitch, so no samurai toy. If I see a samurai toy, I'm gonna, like, freaking... <laughs> I'm gonna, like, bust a gasket. See, Samurai is a very poor show, but it has some of the best designs yeah, in the just entire go buy franchise. The toys. And, yeah, but, like, Shinkenger toys are kind of old and expensive fair, now. Fair. Mm-hmm. Where's my Where's my lightning collection, uh, Jaden? Damn it. Let's stop getting okay. and talk about the- uh, that, that is all the news that's fit to print, so Buster, take all us right, on to new releases. Big one. Ultra Decker, episode 25. Finale, for now. The light far beyond. I really liked this finale. I think this might actually be my favorite Ultraman finale I've seen so far. Um, It really tied together a lot of the themes of the show uh, and, and kind of made me um, a little emotional at a few points. Uh, really drove home how far these characters have come and had some of the best effect shots I've ever seen in TV Tokusatsu. Um, like, it, it really felt like they just went all out here. And I I was in, fully engaged with this finale in a way that I haven't been with an episode of Ultraman 
since uh, Zed finished up. I really liked it, although I can I don't know, something about it just like, I wish there was an epilogue, like, where are they now? I think that's like my- mm-hmm. See, I think they're thinking of the movie as very much the epilogue yeah, after the story. story filmed. Um, uh, but like, as, you know, still pretty good finale. I like a lot of elements about it, like the freaking final shot of like everyone coming back to Earth. Oh, that got hit home. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that hit me. And, like, that fully made me go, like, okay, this show is a really good metaphorical story yeah, no, about the pandemic. Just apply the spears and what they cause to just other topical issues, like, like the immigration, I feel. Mean. Like, you could, you could, like, to just put, and mm-hmm. I know it's, like, that's, it's specifically about COVID, but you could, it, they do it in such a broad way that you could apply it to so much other topical, you know? Um, and I like that a lot, and I just, um... And, uh, you know, just, like, good, everyone got a good final moment. <laughs> this, this part made me crack up, but I have to talk about it. Freaking Kengo, he finally got to pull the trigger! Kengo finally got uh, to have okay, a badass so- moment. After so long of being, like, just kinda there in his own show, and then, like, the cool pseudo-mentor in this show, like, he actually got to have a moment that made me go, like, fuck yeah, you get in there and do your shit, Kengo. I just Kengo. also found it funny because we were saying there's more Trigger pulling the Trigger at the beginning of this show. And Trigger got to pull the Trigger. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's a freaking full circle moment. I'm convinced someone at yeah. the Royal watched that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but, like, again, I, I really enjoyed that we spent so much time at the start of this episode just showing how far... The characters have come in their friendship and their um, working dynamics and their respect for each other. Like, I really buy that the main three of these this show are, like, a, a solid, cohesive unit and they're really good friends in a way that I never did with yeah, Trigger, I Trigger's main three. That I wish the dude got a bit more development. I don't know his name, uh, but, like... Uh, yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be able to remember Ichika's name if it hadn't been yeah, said in this episode. Um, I'm just yeah, bad with names, like that's, though. That's always yeah, been a thing a in my life. Person, so I, I, I am like the last person to call anything forgettable. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, I can instantly recognize anybody yeah. if I see their face. But if you tell me their name and I haven't thought about or talked to them recently, I'll be, I'll have to spend like five minutes yeah, going like, who the fuck is that? But like, for our poor memory aside, yeah, this was a pretty solid cap off to a pretty solid Ultraman show. Mm-hmm. All the all the freaking composite shots, like they did it a couple times before in this show, um, but I don't think I've ever seen it in a Toku before where they had those multi-layer, like all these different kind of effect composite shots that looked that good, and and they did it like three or four times in this episode. Yeah, it was so also, cool. Also, uh, I'm just basically gonna be the last. Unless they play it in the movie, which I doubt it, because the movie's gonna have its own song. This is probably gonna be the last time we hear, like, uh, Ride on Time Decker from Screen Mode, and I'm getting sad because I really like that song. <laughs> like, it's, it's quickly climbing up my top Ultra op- openings, to be honest. Um, That's really interesting, because, like, I don't think it's a bad song, but it never yeah, really I caught I, on. I, I just like me. Screen Mode in general. I, I'm familiar with the discography, so, yeah. Mm. And. Uh, uh, but yeah, good show. I would recommend it. It's all on YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure if I would recommend it as a good first Ultraman show, but like... Yeah, and I don't know if it's my favorite overall, but I think it's it's really solid and like a yeah. huge improvement. I think this would be like the, the Guardian, trigger. like for like my threshold for good Ultraman, like in my, in my tier list. It's like, mm-hmm. it's nowhere near my top three or five, but like, it's a good show. It's it's an it's an upper yeah. middle of the and like, road. I'd give it like a seven eight out of ten if I have to give it a. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Decker are good. I'm very ex- I'm very interested to see what the movie brings. Uh, although like Ultraman movies, the only one I really like of the new generation tie-in movie I really care about is Rube, and that's just because that's an actual like freaking epilogue to that. The rest are just kind of bonus. Um, so I don't know mm-hmm. how I'll feel about the De- Decker. I didn't like the trigger the trigger movie. No, I didn't didn't like it. I just found it. I don't even remember anything about the Trigger movie except for, like, that one scene where there was, like, a bunch of I'm evil, no, I'm not, I'm I'm evil, no, I'm not, I'm evil, no, I'm not. Um, and sucks because Trigger had some really good casting but just didn't use any of it. That's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Oh, whatever. Uh, Ultraman, uh, whatever Kaya, Blazer, Guzzler freaking ends up being, uh, I'm in. Mean, yeah. I hope the next show yeah. is at like, least. If they this just good. keep it up for a bit, I'll be satisfied. 
Now, let's get into some Geeted. <clears throat> Common Utter Geets, episode 11. Uh, 11. 19. I don't know where I got 11 from. Uh, Divergence <laughs> 3. Vote! Who's the Disaster star? Sus Among Us. Ha 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 ha. You okay over there? Oh dear. We're gonna cancel Twitter.com. <laughs> I mean, you you can't really get blamed when yeah, that's exactly yeah, what they're it's, doing it's, here. This episode is just like eject Nudge Sparrow. Oh wait, Nudge Sparrow wasn't the imposter. <laughs> yeah, and I love how he doesn't even get that salty over it. He's just like, ah, my strategy he didn't work. Salty. Oh like, well, I'll pay for this. Is like one of the ones read. It. Oh, mm. I mean, I did watch a different subgroup this week than I normally do because I like their subs better, but they all often take longer to come out. So maybe there was a. Yeah. A different translation, but it, it it came off more to me like he was going, uh, I guess I guess that's not going to work, but uh, you people better watch out, because I wasn't the yeah. disaster. Maybe, that, maybe that's what he was referring to more, instead of you'll all pay, like, a yeah, good solid episode. Actually, I never realized hmm. we talked about basically how different this is. Like, how kind of, like, Geats' games, like, are basic are changing up common Rider action for the better because there's all these gimmicks and like mm -hmm. variety to what they do in the fights now like this these last two episodes they've basically been playing basketball with in suit and that's really cool you know yeah there's a there's a lot of uh very interesting um choreography in this episode that you wouldn't typically see in a henshin hero show because it's more oriented to towards portraying a sport yeah. than it is a battle um Especially, and that especially makes the inclusion of Lopo make sense. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't like, oh, she sticks out like a sore thumb before, but like, the deeper we got into this, um, Jammer Ball arc, uh, the more I, I felt like she's gelled with I the think rest of the, the cast. I think the reason she kind of stuck out is because her helmet is a new sculpt. It's not using the pre-established, uh, sculpting from the other helmets of the, like, the... Yeah, and it clashes with every raise buckle yeah, she's really used so she far. A, like a, a unique, a good raise buckle. I think Monster would fit her best, but she hasn't used Monster because that's been Nudge Sparrow. Uh. Yeah. Um, I also really like that this episode, again, goes out of its way to explain a thing that didn't even really need explaining beforehand. Um, like how off, like how Kawa kept getting boost. We all just assumed, like, oh, he's getting it because he's doing the good boy shit, and the game is programmed to reward the good boy shit, but everybody's too focused on beating each other. Um, no, turns out that was directly his sponsor trying to help him. And now, if I ever go and rewatch those episodes, I'm just gonna picture that little frog guy being like, No, you fucking yeah. idiot, don't give it to um, them! I, I actually think this is a, like, I usually, like, yeah, we didn't really need that explained, but, like, with what they're setting up with the sponsors and their, like, respective, the people they're sponsoring, I think we're gonna get some really good rivalries later on. Um, like, I think there's some mm -hmm. possibility for, like, like, kind of two... F now, I like the Genesis writers from Gaim, but, like, if we get, like, one-to-one -one rivalries with their sponsors... That's gonna be that's gonna be a great evolution of that mm -hmm. concept, you know. Yeah, um, especially since we still haven't seen uh, Neon or Lopo's oh, no, uh, sponsors. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I I do suspect I I am still in the theory of uh, Neon sponsor is just her dad. But I also think since we were already introduced to that character, it's a little odd that we haven't seen him yet in this arc if he's her sponsor. Um, which kind of led to me... I don't I don't necessarily buy into it, but I can see how you would think this. I saw a theory going around today because uh, Notch Sparrow is at the Disaster Star. What if it's Neon because we haven't seen her talk to her sponsor at all yet, and she was the first to go, no, it's definitely not Kawa. Maybe. Um, I, I, I was, like, when the arc began, I was under the assumption that the disaster star was freaking, like, you had no choice. Um, and I was pretty mm -hmm. convinced it was Kawa, because that's a really interesting way to take his character. To, like, freaking make the good boy, like, a forceful traitor. Um, but, like, you know, like, I'm still interested in where, where they can go with the disaster star plot. Also, let's talk about Buffa. Um, okay, I think his plot... Punished Buffa yeah, also, arc, let's go. Like, <laughs> expert. Um, the, 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 the guy who's complaining about realism. And he talks about how... Yeah, oh, yeah, the doctor-looking guy. The fancy man with, like, assistant lady. She has a, like, he has a new assistant. Or maybe it's not new. He's, but... That should be their character names forever. Fancy yeah. man and assistant but So, like, lady. fancy man, he's talking about, like, he goes up to Buffa near the end of the episode, who's, like, kind of just, like, you know, playing dead. 
and like he's always talking about oh it's not realistic or freaking like common writers who like keep getting alive is are we getting a freaking meta commentary on modern common writer with this guy is he going to be the equivalent of ultimate orb dark where he shows up and is basically like i miss when everything was good in my day uh and, like i hate the new guys <laughs> that, that's where my brain is going He's an, he's an early Heisei yeah, fan. Freaking, I don't, I'm not sure if that's where they're going. But with all this, they have to be setting something up thematically with this talk about realism. Mm -hmm. Especially because he freaking dumped Buffa back in the, uh, the Jammer Destroy Ruins place yeah. from his nightmare. Really interesting. I'm not sure what they're going to do with him, but I'm very interested. Yeah. I also like that they kind of subverted the expectation of not having a big surprise moment for the other characters of, what? Buffa's still alive? No, he just shows up, and then Geats is like, oh, sick, let's have dinner. And then he goes to, he ha he gives him dinner, and then he goes back to the, the cafe place and makes Kawa dinner and is like, there so is Buffa's no alive. sexual exclamation for all of this. <laughs> It's kind of hilarious how he comes home and is just like, oh, 3 a.m., time for my traditional Salisbury steak and potatoes. Would you like to join me for a for a totally platonic okay. date, Kayla? Doesn't it just remind me of that one Kabuto scene where, like, Kabuto yells at Kagami where I'm like, I'm not your friend. Want to have a play date? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's full on like, hey, dude. I haven't voted for you yet, but you've also given me no reason to not vote for you. So you need to get out there and do that. Like, you have to earn getting your way out of this. You can't just do it on the back of having been a nice guy up till now. Like, that. that's, that's such a nice, like, layered bit of character relationship that I wouldn't expect from a show targeted at this audience, uh, at this kind of demographic. Um, even when Common Rider does tend to be more mature than what we get here in the States, in recent years, it's it's been a little more simplistic than that in terms of intercharacter dynamics. So to see it get to a more layered thing of like, no, I don't complicitly trust you all the time. You've got to earn it. Again, I really appreciate Kabuto, that. Because like, yeah. Like, One day. I, sorry, I, Kabuto is like my second favorite. You know, just, it makes me go like, I love mm. when like, and I, I'm not like, that's not negative against Keats. I like, because it's playing with it in a different way than Kabuto. Did. So like, it's not, it's not like quote unquote copying it. And even then it's like playing with the text of the franchise. And that's what Common Editor is. That's what's so cool about Common Editor being this franchise that goes new story to new story. Yeah. Um... One thing I do find, uh, like, potentially disturbing about this episode, though, is Geats actually comes to the wrong conclusion, going like, oh, these Jamato just copied that human's likeness, when we know the truth that, no, one of them is really yeah, him. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we're, we're totally gonna get, like, a freaking Yuya from Guy moment. They're, tr they're saving the big oh shit moment as We're long get, as like, they possibly can for him. Yeah, a lot of mention of Gaimans. I'd... Yeah. Well, I go, well, uh, but, uh... <laughs> I'm... I'm not exactly happy, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh... But no, this was this yeah. is a really good episode. Uh, like, this, this little opening of this arc has had some, like abrupt and weird characterization changes but it's starting to settle back into what feels like more yeah. natural I, I writing to is, me like i like every time i like i think about geats i'm like eh, am i really feeling it as much as the other shows and then i watch an episode i'm like oh yeah i'm feeling it mr krabs you know um I, mm -hmm. I, I guess it's just like it's it freaking suffers power rangers effects where like if you talk about it with people i get like eh, am i into it but like when i actually watch it, i'm like yeah you know yeah, and even with all this interesting characterization and stuff I'm talking about, there's still those little funny tokusatsu moments in this episode, like Keiwa finding out that his sponsor is just a spe a frog yeah, statue with a speaker a on it. He's gonna become a and then, uh, writer? I... Mm, uh, the moment and the moment Geats wins the game for them by summoning Gigant Shooter, and it's just the Magnum Shooter prop again. Mm -hmm. Uh but yeah, no, Probably uh, pretty good geeks this the week. Bit. Um, just lots of interesting stuff happening. I'm excited to see where it goes. All right, Avatar yeah. Sentai Dodd Brothers, episode 45, Two Villages. Okay, this episode is, this is episode this is like, so oh, nice. all is lost moment. Kinda. 
But it also just feels like such a more natural episode of Sentai than I'm used to from Dom Brothers. Like, there's only really been a couple episodes that have felt like normal Sentai writing to me. And I think there was one early on, then there was the Christmas episode, and now this one. Like, this just feels like good, solid story progression with characters talking to each other about things and hashing shit out instead of wacky nonsense with a big reveal at the end. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to rag on Dom Brothers. I understand that's what the show has been going for. But I like that freaking the car meme that that's great but i like this i don't know i i just i just thought it was like neat it was a neat setup for like more final arc stuff uh actually i haven't like i know since this is like we, there's not much to talk about this element the king oger mecha thing i know everyone's saying it came out of like left field kind of did uh i have a theory about that are you, one, new? Are, are you new to like freaking sentai cameo and two i actually have a theory that like it's the the King Oger, because it comes from a gear, an Avatar gear. I think the King Oger mecha was made by the will of the Dawn Clan. Like, at least this version, in this content. Like, the, the idea is, because no one could use their mecha at the time they need the King Oger mecha. So the freaking will of the Dawn Clan or some shit, it's like a backup plan, like the freaking Dawn Killer Kill. Um, yeah. Entirely I possible. I, they're probably not going to confirm that, but that's my head. Also, yeah, that suit exactly looks so really good. Suit. Especially love the little, like, clanks when it does. Especially because, like, it comes in with Dado Nitajin's helmet. And then it just, like, after it defeats Kichigo, mm -hmm. who turns into a monster bash again, it go, it go, the little, like, antennas on the chest go, Ju, Ju, to reveal the free, free helmet. And then it just, like, walks away badassly and just disappears. I was like, ooh, I yeah. like that. Like, I know some people are going to say, oh, no, they're taking a step back when Dom Brothers was doing so much new stuff with the effects. I, I really like that it's an actual suit, but it's on a CGI background, and they use CGI to embellish yeah, really parts good. of it. Like, that, that feels so much more natural and revolutionary than the full CGI mechs Even we've that, had in Dom like, Brothers. I think a lot of Toku uses, like, CGI to embellish physical suits, so it's not really that new. It's mostly just mm -hmm. here. It's cool using it for the mecha more so. Um, you know, and I, I think I prefer that even... And again, I think Don Burr's physical suits are much better than the CGI suits. Even if I, I do like the CGI part parts of CGI battles that they have done. Oh yeah, we've talked about how like the CGI is better than people say it is, but it still ain't great a lot yeah. before with this show. Uh, speaking of that, I freaking like the little like Inu and Taro freaking having like now that they fully know who they, each other are, they're kinda like butting heads a lot. They're butting heads, but they also have like this this pseudo uh protagonist and lancer yeah. uh character you know, dynamic really going on with like freaking red which, and black ring. yeah i almost wish it was that way from the start but i under i understand why it wasn't um and it's it's so interesting seeing them interact especially because every scene just boils down towards hey we should do this thing i'm not doing that just because you say we i should do that Will you please do this yeah, thing? after some, like, right. freaking fighting. Because, like, I, they have set up this dynamic before with, like, them and Sue, where, like, Taro just freaking, like, one moment he just kicks Inu Brother out of the scene. It's just, uh, and, like, earlier episodes. Yeah, they, oh, they yeah, I forgot about that. For a bit. And, like, with that infamous, like, Inu Brother is in the rain moment, like, Taro's just, like, get over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like, they've kind of had that before. And also, mm -hmm. like, it's also making me think, what are they setting up of Taro's kind of apathetic? Because, like, even though Taro has grown, like, he still has that edge of apathy. And Natsumi, at least the bestial of Natsumi, has mentioned that before last episode. I'm wondering where that's going to go. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't she say, like, you're less yeah. human than I am at one and, like, point? I'm wondering where that's going. If, like, and we're probably going to get that explored next episode because freaking Taro's in the bestial realm right now. Mm -hmm. Also, like, they, they totally acknowledged the thing that you picked up on, and I was like, I don't know if they're gonna go that way, with her, with, uh, uh, Shin Nanaoki being like, yeah. it's all in my manga. Like, immediately, Inu is like, oh, that's spoilers, I gotta read those spoilers yeah. so I can and save my they wife. Freaking, they're basically taking, hey, remember that little joke at the end of Kamen Under Build? What if we made that, like, an actual point? Yeah, uh, and I love the scene where they're trying where they're trying to find the door to the other dimension, and then the the um the policeman shows up, and it's like it's a bizarre scene with how the exposition is handled, 
but it's also just written as a normal exposition scene yeah. with this weird quirk to it. And I I vastly prefer that kind of in a way writing. Like, yes, it's weird, it's obtuse, but it still gets the job done and doesn't make me go like, wait, Pretty what? Solid. Um also poor Murasame. Freaking basically is just a weapon right now. Um Poor Murasame oh, yeah, and also like, poor Chiro. It's supposed to be his episode. And he's freaking getting like like all he does is spend like a lot of the time off. We find out his entire yeah. life is a lie. I don't know who, like, why, or like, at, not at least not a lie. At least, okay, here's like what I'm thinking. What if his childhood friends, like, got freaking, are either like illusion, like they did exist at one point, but now they're gone, and he's hallucinating adult versions of them. I think it's possible they could be people, like the images could be people that once lived in the village. But I also think, like, they have been illusions created yeah. by the Penguin Bestial uh, yeah, his entire so life. Especially with that flashback where he creates the Jiro yeah. personality. And, like, a friend of mine mentioned this, and I'm thinking, oh, this could be a very big possibility. Is Jiro going to be the final boss? It's entirely possible, because, like... This whole episode is about, like, Kijino freaking out for the third time when something happens to Miho and becoming a monster. And that's just that man losing his wife. Jiro's entire life is a lie. What's he going to do when he finds that yeah, out? I think it might be, like, oh god, I, I'm thinking about the possibility of, like, that being the final battle of dogs. Or, like, one of the major final battles. There's going to be a lot of final battles, I guarantee you. Yeah, we've got a whole second Sarah Brand yeah, team now that cool. we got to deal with. Uh, I, I like the little like personalities, but basically it's like heightened versions of Sonoza and Sonoi. Um, mm -hmm. and also just seeing Sonoshi again. Uh, yeah, he's great. I love him. I love them. Yeah, and I love that the, that opening scene right before we get their debuts, where the uh, the Sarah Brands are. Uh, talking to each other in an elevator about like, ah, oh, shit, what are we going to do now? It really reminded me of that little moment, uh, hey, second time I brought up Earthspark tonight, in the uh, the Earthspark mid-season finale where uh, the two Seeker ladies are flying around, and one of them is just like, we don't have any options left. It's either we work for this guy, or we become Autobots, or, or the Autobots capture us. And the other one is just like, is it too late to become Autobots? Yeah, they, like, you do have that whole illusion of like all the main five main Don brothers and them like being like big team cute. Oh, yeah. No, well, Dragoku like, he, he was just, there he too. He wasn't in suit. He just came like running in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. And like, but man, thinking of like Jiro as this like freaking like unwilling victim, like in this freaking like scenario, that's so sad. And like. Like, I think that might force Taro to freaking, like, get more empathetic. Or it's because he's been, like, like, I'm at, that would, that would mm -hmm. be some, like, I, I, again, the Dodgers could go in so many different directions, but I think it would be beautiful. Well, he clearly wants to be and is clearly trying to be. I mean, the entire impetus for the trip was, oh, some random human raised you? I should probably say thanks to them because you're, yeah. like, a cousin of mine. But, like, even then, like, Taro's kind of, like, I think they're, like, building up to, like, freaking Taro's kind of been, like, like, he has to, like, his empathy will start with Jiro, like an old blood member, and like, and that might empathy might have to be killing him. I don't know. I mean, again, there's so many ways the show could go right now. Um, and then the freaking next episode's mm -hmm. gonna be like a tear jerker because somebody's gonna die. Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody yeah, um, will be murdered in the preview, but I'm not gonna say any more than that. Um, anyway, yeah, man, the Stone Brothers is beautiful. I love it a lot, and. I hope it will, like, we're approaching, after the next episode, we'll have the last four, and this is gonna, this is gonna be a wild, wild ride. It's gonna be really taken for a ride, say. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, let's talk about a bit more lighter, like, in terms of... Yeah, let's, let's hit, let's hit up some yeah, old you go stuff, first shall we? Uh, double. Yeah, let me, let me talk about all the double I watched this week, because I watched a lot of double. I watched episodes 11 through 18, plus Movie War 2010, uh... Episodes are pretty good. I I, I like Double. It, it, it's moving along at a decent pace. I just got to the end of yeah. Nazca's uh, tenure on the show. Ooh, that I was a bit Nazca of a tearjerker. So and I, I um, think he's like one of the best common Rider villains or generals. And like, I'm kind of glad he got like mm -hmm. axed early. Definitely the best opening arc villain. Yeah, I've I don't seen think there's really much time. competition. I guess Bloodstark, but Bloodstark's kind of like an overall build villain. Yeah, because Bloodstock is just evil before yeah. he starts calling himself evil. Um, 
spoilers for Belt. <laughs> I actually, I've seen a lot of people like video essayists I follow been watching Bo for the first time, so that's nice. Oh, well, uh, hey, spoilers. Gen Gentoku is kind of a, a villain at first, and then he becomes a good boy. I consider him more like the yeah, opening villain of, of uh, Build. Um, uh, but anyway, um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really liked Nazca. I liked his whole thing of like, no, we have to have a code. We have to be moral about this this crime thing we're doing. And then and then the dad is just straight up like, nah, bitch, we're pure evil, and there is no escaping this. Yeah, you are going to die. As you're gonna learn Fuck later you. on to give like some teasers, um, they're kind of a family drowning. So like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious where the story is going now because I also got the uh, the first big uh, Wakana focus two parter, which also hints at a lot of Philip's backstory. And thanks to that and the movie war, I've kind of pieced together like, oh, he's another Sonazaki child, and he has amnesia, and he's where the memories come from. And him and Wakana were probably very close until he became the memory factory. That. <laughs> um uh but but yeah that was really good uh hey fang joker is a thing now and i yeah. fucking love that suit i think of the of the combo forms in double it's yeah. probably and my favorite i love that it's like a like like the base double forms is like shotaro in the body but fang joker is philip in the body. that's such a cool idea like mess around mm -hmm. And I also love how they they explained like it's it's a power up slash berserker form, so it can only be used for a limited time and not like all the time. So the story reason they came up with is the memory is a sentient sentient little dinosaur robot that's programmed to protect Philip, so it will only come and let them use it when he yeah, is in danger. Control, control, they're getting at. and yeah, uh, is Excel on the show yet? <laughs> Uh, okay, he is debuting XL next debut. episode. There was a little preview of him at the end of oh, the okay. episode I just I watched today. Uh, talk about Movie War 2010, because that's a movie. Ugh. I actually really liked it. Uh, I, I know you would <laughs> like the double portion. Like, <laughs> you know why it would be... I've I've heard I've heard whispers of this movie for years. I know it's very contentious for some people, especially the decade half. And, like, I get it. This should have just been the last episode of the show, but it still works fine as an ending to Decade. Like, I don't see the problem here. Having it be like a meta-commentary thing where all these characters have to, like, reach their final point and come together to say, like, no, even though we didn't really accomplish anything, the mere fact that we went on that journey means that Decade mattered and that it was a real show. Really I really that. dug that. I still felt it was inconclusive, and I mm -hmm. freaking hate how they did Yusuke in this movie. Because I really like Yusuke in the Decade show. Uh, the ultimate coup. I, f I think Decade Yusuke kind of sucks across the board, but, like, the fact, that, the fact that I've always fought that meant that, like, his suckiness didn't particularly yeah, stick out so to me in this like movie at all. Why? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. This was right where Rising Ultimate Kuga came from. The worst common yeah, rider suit of so all time. <laughs> like it. Yeah. I do love the fan service thing though of bringing Doras back and and having like an action set piece where it takes every Heisei final form up to that point to destroy Doras again. Basically saying fucking Zio was stronger than every Heisei oh, phase yeah. 1 rider. Um also, Kivala is a cool suit. Uh, it was a little abrupt for her to get those powers, but like they set it up a little bit in the huh. show, so I didn't hate it. The only thing I really hated about that portion of the movie was Tackle. There's no fucking reason for Tackle to be in this movie other than for Sukasa to have somebody yeah, to talk to for the first ten minutes. Um, uh, I don't know. I, yeah. don't, I don't really like Decade's endings that it has. Both endings. I think both of them are not that great. But, like, I'm glad you found some enjoyment out of this ending. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I was like is is conspicuous by its absence is they never properly explained Narutaki. He just fucking turns into a shocker general yeah, for the I whole kinda, movie. He's a, he's one of my favorite decade characters, so I kind of like, like I don't even need like the most in-depth exclamations. I just need like basic ones, and I feel like they didn't even like basic. Mm -hmm. 
Like, literally, all you have to do, it, like, at this point, they could explain Narutaki's grudge with Decade as, at some point in the future, before they knew each other, n Decade cucked Narutaki out of the last muffin at the bakery one morning, well, and yeah, he's been double, pissed double, at him ever since. <laughs> anyway, what did you the double portion? But, uh... The double portion is so yeah. fucking uh, would good. You say it's favorite part of double so far? <laughs> I don't know if it's my favorite part, but like, fucking yeah, Skull right. lived up to the hype, man. Fucking, I have I have known about Skull for the entire time I've been an online Toku fan, which is God, probably like seven or eight years now. Um, and. I have always thought it's one of the best rider suits, and actually seeing it in action and getting to know that character a little more, they still kind of keep him at arm's length. They still give him that mystique put on a pedestalness that Shotaro has for him. But just getting to see like more scenes with him in full context outside of flashbacks made him feel like a real character and like yeah that's a common you fucking to, like, a writer full my story, dude uh the double portion of o's x double uh is basically that so like if after you finish double maybe you could do that yeah i'm considering watching that and also like a part of me would like to watch fours next yeah, just oh, so i can watch mega please, max please, with full context because people have told people have told me for years that mega max is I the best writer movie agree, ever but it's pretty darn um, good yeah, uh, but but I don't know. We'll we'll see about that later down the road. Uh, but yeah, the double portion was great. I I like how it it reaffirms uh Philip and Shotaro's relationship, and I especially really dug that like they they again kind of subverted my expectations in a smart way that feel that still feels satisfying. Of I kept expecting like okay, there's got to be a scene somewhere in this movie where Philip has to break down and tell Akiko that Narumi is dead. And that never happens. Instead, we get a moment where Shotaro, where Philip is trying to explain to Akiko why Shotaro is acting so irrationally in the movie. And she's just like, I fucking get it. I know he's dead, okay? I'm just waiting for him to get up the guts to tell me. That's why I haven't broached the topic yet, but why else would I be here if I didn't know he was dead? And that just, that felt so much more raw and real than a big emotional actor's fake crying scene could have been. Um, so I really appreciated that. And then, and then the crossover element is a bunch yeah, of dumb fan service fun that I liked. Boys, just like, let's sell some toys and have fun. Mm hmm Here's here's what Cyclone and Joker would look like as regular yeah, suits. And maybe maybe have oh, fun. I have Joker sand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh oh believe me. Dude, like one of the first things I ever saw that got me enticed in Common Rider was a review of Figuart's skull and Joker. So like I know nice. both those suits yeah. are bad. I'm very excited for you to see the context of Joker um, and double proper. Yeah, but uh, that's that's uh, my whoop. double report for the week. Uh, so, Buster, right. why don't you talk about uh, something for a little guess bit? Guess continuing on from Toku that aired in 2009, Power Rangers RPM. I just decided, you know what? It's on YouTube right now. It's, it's going to be finished next week. Prior to, uh, sorry, because I wanted to finish the show. So I just took a night, and like I, I already watched a few episodes, so I just took a night and just watched it all. Man, RPM's really done good. I, I, I know, I, here's the thing, I've talked about on the show how I have a complicated show, because it was one of the seasons I grew up with next to Jungle Fury and Overdrive, but also the online fandom's response, a like, kind of worship of RPM, made me... RPM is, it. I'm sorry, can I, can I interject for a second? RPM is crazy overhyped, but it's still really damn good and potentially it's the best season of the franchise. the Miracle Black Sheep. It is a black sheep, but that doesn't mean it's bad. And yeah, it's the it's the Star Trek DX uh, DS Nine of Power Rangers. Rangers. Um, and I still love it a lot. I think it has some of the best comedy writing. I think it has some of the best character writing. I think it has some fun villains. Uh, I think Vengex, like he could have been a bit more. I think he did good for what he was given. And and I also I also this also made me kind of reconsider. Okay, Ventex wasn't really the problem with Beast Morphus. Everything else was. <laughs> that's that's my own. That's my that's that's a whole other story <laughs> we can get into another day. Um, no, 
And now I will say the Chip Lin episode. Heroes Among Us, ha, huh, is really good. And then like there's a also, there's a couple other good episodes. Right when it gets to Dome Dolls, the show kind of gets okay. It takes a massive step. Like and then like it kind of mm. peaks back up in the finale. I'd say Dome Dolls, like there's still a like, good moments in those Chip Lin episodes, but the overall core just feels freaking like action over character writing. And when we do get that character writing, it's pretty flanderized. Like they do Ziggy dirty in some of these, like, later episodes. They kind of flanderize him as just kind of like, I'm a goofy guy, instead of just, like, to the more nuances he has. Like, instead of, like... Yeah, I I don't know. I think I probably need to rewatch RPM, too, because I haven't seen the back half in a long time. I've seen the pilot... I've seen Road to Corn through Dr. K, like, a ton of times, but I rarely go beyond that. I've maybe watched the yeah, whole show twice. Honestly, I wish like I wish Eddie Gazelian never went over budget because I kind of would have loved to see what Dylan final boss would have been like. I think that would have been a really cool twist. Um, and I thought like okay, there's like and mm-hmm. I thought that the kind of the direction Chip Lin went in it was fine, but like it's not the worst second half drop I've seen. In a toku that still belongs to hibiki because god what the hell were they that that's that just like an unavoidable mess and there were still great episodes within the chiplin era but it kind of showed that like eddie is probably the closest thing power rangers had to like a true mad lad creative writer like a toshiki inoue a yasuko kabuyashi mm-hmm. in like sentai writer well well, like remember, famously one of the one of the biggest stories about RPM behind the scenes was he went in going like, "I don't care what footage you saddle me with, I have a story that'll work that I can retrofit to anything." And then he saw the Sentai suits, I and he was say, like, "What the fuck I is that?" I have seen Go Onger before. Like that was actually the first Sentai I finished. And and I think like, oh, having okay. that Go Onger context in this recent rewatch. I think he did a good job, like, counterfeiting, per- like, putting personalities of, like, the Goanger and still keeping Goanger's com- comedy just, like, in a different way that still fits this. And and I also like that, he, like, he has reoccurring side characters. Like, you got the Colonel, you got Fresno Bob, you got, like, I mean, those are really the major ones, but they're still, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, there's, Hicks there's and a Vasquez? Of reoccurring characters, especially in the, when, in the Eddie era. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, that fucking reminds me. One thing that... Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta hijack yeah, go just to go back to Double for a second. One thing that really impressed me about one of the episodes I watched this week was one of the one-off characters came oh, back yeah, for like, a scene in a two-parter. All the double one-offs come back. Where they were... Like, like that was, that was so cool. That makes Futo feel so much more like a real, alive world than general Japan City that every well, yeah, other rider Double show has, takes like, place the best, in like, does. Individual world building next to build of any um uh that's that's my nice. but like back to RPM. Yeah, like there's just there's a lot and I kinda like I think I, I see why I think Simon said he liked RPM because I can see a bit of RPM DNA in Dino Fear in terms of having like reoccurring characters, like com- even just for comedy bits, or just like the the, the way mm-hmm. jokes are delivered. Um, it never, like, there is a couple times where I feel like it comes off a bit mean-spirited, but, like, they manage to, like, again, like, Ranger Blue, that's an episode infamous for all its meta joke. But, like, the way they incorporate it to the narrative, like, freaking Flynn, and, like, how it basically turns into embracing what makes Power Rangers Power Rangers despite it all. I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Ra- Ranger Blue is I, such I a good episode, it, man. Like, the Flynn like... stuff- I haven't I haven't ranked my favorite episodes in years, but I think it's gotta yeah, it be at be least in the top three episode, for me. Although Go to Corinth is still real because I, Yeah. Well I mean yeah. I'm talking Power Rangers in general. Uh yeah. Ranger Blue is up there for me because I just I love how earnest Legit, of yeah, a he's character. Probably Flynn the best is. Blue Ranger, um in mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't get a lot to do, but when he gets the spotlight, he yeah. freaking shines uh, like Gemma, a sun. Gemma. Um, I know a lot of people find them annoying, uh, and I personally, as an autistic person, uh, I found a lot of autistic coding in them. I need to, like, I, I need to, like, think about it a bit more, but, like, I, I especially appreciate, like, Gemma's focus episode with Flynn, and how I could see myself a lot, or just Gem Heroes mm-hmm. Among Us. I think that's one of the best RPM episodes, especially in Chip's era, where, because the way Gem, like, is very empathetic, but still, like, kind of has it excitable, I could see myself a lot in those two. And... Yeah, I've 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 often heard there's uh there's autism coding in them and I never found them annoying or I was like 
they could come off as annoying, yeah. but I think that's part and of the point of the characters. They're very excitable. They're, they're very earnest. And I think they're, like, a nice subversion mm -hmm. of the freaking like, uh, like, badass sick that we usually see in Power Rangers, of, like, how they're usually... No, they're just, mm -hmm. like, happy to be here, and they're genuine friends of, like... And they still, like, tie into the overall plot. Um, also... The finale... You know, I, RPM's finale is it's good, but like it kind of suffers from a bit of the problems I have with Chip's era tenure on the show overall. Um, but I think it overall ended on a strong note, and I kind of wish like Battle for the Grid got one more season so Vengex could have be in the game and he could have an install freaking Dragon Ball Fighters. Like, cause his delete move <laughs> is a perfect insta kill in a fighting that would that would go so hard as like an insta move in a fighting. I don't. I know. Like you're not like too much of a yeah. fighting game, but I just need to mention that. I need to share that like revelation I had. Also, speaking of Vengex moves, how has begin the download <laughs> never been a meme? I yeah, really feel like that of, has like, huge Power meme Rangers potential. Is the era got meme potential? I mean, like the freaking the, the thing that kind of pushed me to finally watch this show mm -hmm. was a meme someone made of just freaking Chainsaw Man monster of like Hickback blaring, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you want yeah. freaking. It's time, it's time to go back. It's time to watch what is now my, like, I can confidently say RPM is my favorite season of the show, and I love it dearly. And despite it all, yeah, it's, it, it's got it's a bit of that childhood good. bias with it, but like, hey, no, no, nothing wrong with that. And hey, you like it the same way I like SPD and Dino Thunder. Yes, it's overhyped by a lot of people, and yes, I'm biased because it was one of my first ones. But if you look at it critically, it's yeah. still legitimately it very good. It probably has, like, it, it might be, like, because of the lower episode count, it might have one of the worst good-to-bad episode ratios in terms of the good seasons, quote-unquote. Because it was, like, I don't know, because, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, you could probably nitpick the show and, like, oh, this episode wasn't as good as this one, but, like, I forget, the good stuff is really good. And I'm very, and this has kind of got me really excited for, like, when Hasbro does Lightning Collection. Yeah. 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 Here's not, hoping they don't fuck it up. If the suits are good, then I'll be fine. I don't really care about accessories. Accessories just who cares? I will buy it if the suits are accurate or like most just mostly. If it's just one, oh, you forgot this little dot on this suit. Mm -hmm. Who cares? You know? Yeah. We 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 talk about it in the news a lot, and we make fun of it because it's a huge fandom talking point because people are seriously detail oriented when it comes to those kind of figures, but. I have always been somebody with action figures where it's like, I don't need every little detail picked out. As long as it gets the idea across and doesn't look yeah. bad, I'm fine. Um, yeah, RPM Kino, uh, want to talk about your own Sentai adventure? Uh, yeah, uh, I got a bug up my butt this weekend and decided to uh, binge Super Sentai Strongest Battle because... Uh, this was something that happened during my brief period of, like, stubbornly not watching Weekly Toku, because I'd gotten a bit burned out right at the start of Lupat, and I was just yeah. like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break. Uh, I'm, this gonna, I'm just gonna do a hard like, break. End of his um, point, because Rhea Soldier is the first Reiwa Sentai, and in between Lupat and Rhea Soldier, they had this little end of Heisei battle, um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I've seen, like, the first five episodes of Blue Pat, but I've never finished it, I've never watched Rue Soldier, I've never watched Kira Major, and I've never watched this, but I kind of realized that this is the only thing post Gokaiger that has Gokaiger characters in it I still haven't seen, and it also has other Sentai characters I really like, and... From what I'd seen, it had very little, like, tie-in to Lupat or Ryu Soldier, so I was like, all right, let's, let's just, let's just do this. I got time. Let's just do this real quick. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's really fucking good, because it's basically Koichi Sakamoto taking his, um, Ultra Galaxy fight formula yeah. and applying and it to like, Sentai. There's really iconic actions here, so, like, good characters, like, iconic characters from the he early Heisei. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets like a really big cool character moment. Like I I fucking hate Takaharo. He's one of the worst Sentai Reds I've ever seen. But he's great in this show. Who wrote, who wrote strongest battle again? Uh I I did check after I finished it. It's somebody who's who had written a check. lot of I, Sentai I before then. Name. Um check and their head Ah, there it is. Narahisa Arakawa, the head writer of Gokaiger. Yo, he knows his way around legacy. Yeah, he'd been he'd been working on Sentai yeah, he's almost the head his entire of career, Ranger, I think. Kira Major, um, Robber Ranger. 
Uh, his first credits are yeah, Common he, Rider, Black, he's, and he's Jetman. Like the, he's been with, like, Toei for a long while. Yeah, and it seems like after Jetman, he pretty much exclusively worked on Sentai, except for a few outside of Toei projects. So, man man knows Sentai inside and out, and he was probably yeah, fairly familiar with to, all like, those get, characters. Like, get the strengths um, in, like, their own, in his own way, you know? Yeah. And, like, I knew Marvelous and Luca were in this, but I didn't expect them to be the freaking main focus. That made me so happy, especially because it's a very different kind of Marvelous story, but it still feels really consistent with his character. I could see people arguing that Luca maybe got nerfed a little bit because she's a damsel in distress for a lot of this, but as soon as she gets out of it, she's right back to being a badass. So you feel like uh, Geysorg just yeah. caught her off guard oh, or something like that. how did you feel like about that? the new soldier all of it? Uh, I kind of spaced out for most of it. The only one that I really got, had like a reaction to is when uh, Green and Black show up and beat the, the big bad at the last second and kind of steal that from the main cast of the special. But I wasn't too mad about it because I was just like... Well, their arcs are basically done now. They don't need to fight the also, big like bad. A, That's that okay. Right you can have Rhea that, Soldier. guys. And kind of the idea of Green and Black initially in Rhea Soldier is like they're kind of wanderers. They're kind of like lone. They're lone from the other team. And they, they still cut. So that's, that, that mm -hmm. kind of fits with it. Yeah. Um, so I like that. I also really enjoyed the villains. Like the fact that there's a, there's a Sentai version of Rita now makes me so happy. Uh, that's not just Bandora, and that she had, like, a legitimate motivation that thematically made sense with all the all the hero characters in the special, and, like, why that would be ideologically opposed, and there was a really cool moment of them explaining why her ideology was flawed, and she should stop being evil, yeah. and then she just does! Uh, I haven't actually watched Strongest Battle yet, I've just seen the big clips, especially the Yamato fights, These people really like the Yamato's freaking, yeah. Oh yeah, y Yamato's a goat. I, I, I loved him. I loved him in uh, Juoger, and he was great in this too. I especially I especially love that like they paid attention to continuity, and Yamato literally goes, Marvelous, you're acting sketchy. Something's up. Just fucking tell me. We're not doing this shit again. And Marvelous is like, no, you, no, you don't. <laughs> like, that is, that is yeah. pitch perfect uh, for those two characters. Uh... He's fine. He gets he gets a moment. He gets a solid moment that makes sense for his character. I like that they acknowledge uh, that Q Ranger is from a different universe, and like it's harder for him to get in touch with his teammates. Uh, but he definitely yeah, didn't I mean, he really got, feel like, like the focus Koichi here. Sakamoto already, so um, that's probably why he was picked. Yeah. Uh, Friggin' loved Kagura in this. She felt like she had actually progressed a little nice. bit since the finale of Tokyo Jur, uh, which made me happy because I have I have long been of the opinion that Tokyo Jur is massively we overrated. underrated. I really like that show. Um, oh, you said overrated. Underrated. Yeah. Oh dang it! I meant to say underrated. Uh, but uh, yeah, that that was good. The the action mm. in this is fucking immaculate like koichi is firing on all cylinders and like it it almost makes me wish we got we would get more of these like i i know koichi has been really busy with ultraman and he's just been temping for toei these last few years but god would i love for him to do another one of these kind of things for sentai like he's been doing for ultraman and I would love to see him do something like this for Common Rider, especially with the Toei Tokusatsu Network being a thing yeah. now. Like, Maybe give him a mini the finale of Outsiders or something. I don't know. Yeah, freaking like every all the villains, be insane. anti heroes all together, freaking going at it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, uh, strongest battle is great. Highly recommended. Uh, I I definitely think uh, you don't have to see Lupat or a uh, Ryu Soldier to understand it because. Uh, I was I was worried. I had seen gifs of the the Pattern Ranger Red guy in the special, and it made me for for like a, a little while there under the impression that he was like a main cast member. He's yeah, he's, he's like he's a glorified cameo in this. To my knowledge, just to pass the yeah, he's he's just there to be like an obstacle for Yamato uh, that immediately yields, but like yeah. in a way that's respectful to both characters. 
Mm -hmm. And there's a few more surprise cameos in there, too. They got, like, a lot of... A lot of people who came back for Go Kyger also yes. came like back ADR for this for little cameos. Like a uh, couple phys uh, physical cameos. Like it's not a ton of people, and they also do the the Doctor Who trick of just show shoot somebody from behind and have it be their signature outfit, so you yeah. know who it's supposed to be, but you don't see their face with a few people. But uh, they they try to intermingle it with people who they actually got the face actor back, which is which is fun because like if you know Sentai, you're able to pick out like. Oh, hey, that's Raita's back in that right, shot. Let's move beyond Toei and Tsuburaya and just the, the the big three. Because as people have been knowing, I've been watching a bunch of quote-unquote niche Tosu. And we have I have finished the second entry in the Toho Star God series, Just Ariser. Now, I gotta give a little uh, backstory. Now, I saw the Just Arisers, but I was a very little kid. I freaking love those. I thought those are, were... I think hmm. they're still some of my favorite Toei stuff. Not Toho Suit, Toho Suit, of like, I think Caesar X might have, Caesar X and like, Just the Riser are like, head in head for like, the best suits in the Toho Star God. Grand Caesar has a good suit. Um, and I finished it, and it was an improvement over Grand Caesar, but also I didn't like, I don't know, it's, it's fine, it's a fine show, I just think it could have got a bit, um, I will say like, to start with some of the negatives, the rival character, mm. I really like the rival character in Grand Caesar. Uh, basically, the initially starting off as an like, evil ranger rider, but then he becomes a good guy, and he was great in Grand Caesar. He kind of sucked at Mister Riser. Not gonna lie, uh, it was pretty just. He was like mind controlled, and there wasn't really too much emotion to it. And I guess that's the trade off because while I thought the Grand Caesar cast was underdeveloped, but the rival character was good. And Just Riser, the rival character is kind of underdeveloped, but the main cast is pretty solid. Um, you got um Shota. Shota Riser Glenn, the red one, and then you got script I have because I have written about this, and I will the video will be published eventually uh, about just um you got Riser Glenn who's like the red guy, you got uh, Riser Kagagiri who is the blue one, and Riser Gaunt who is like I think the what do you call that color on Gaunt? Uh, I think it's like purplish, it's like dark purplish. Um, and Gaunt is more like he's the older guy he's like more of the tactician kagagiri's more like i just kind of want to do high school girl stuff and shot and he's just kind of and dante is just kind of a slacker kind of but like he still wants to save humanity and stuff uh it's yeah. only kind of like a light black um like it's leaning towards maybe a purple but it, 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 it um, looks more black at a glance yeah, and they have like more personality and development than the most of the Grand Caesar cast, but like also I feel like there's just a large stretch in the show where it's just lore plot, lore plot, lore plot, and it barely gives the characters to breathe. There's like a twenty episode stretch and like this fifty episode Oof. show of just here's more but lore plot, lore plot. I will say I do like the power up they give the just arisers, because they all basically do like uh the a fusion, kind of like the uh Abba Ranger super form or Dino Thunder. Uh, where they all three of them come together and basically form like a uh, super form, but like this is like it's basically a new suit. It's not just an upgrade for the red. It's just a whole new suit. Uh, Riser Shirogane suit. Uh, and there's some good stories to tell with it. But like I, I still like this. Isn't like my favorite show I've seen, but it's a solid one. Solid. It's not gonna. It's like, and I do think it's like it's a nice improvement over Grand Caesar. And if you grew up with it, I think you'll love it a lot. You still like you'll still love it a lot. It definitely like has that nostalgia factor for a lot of people. But I, I'd still say it's fine. Like, it's not gonna be like the most groundbreaking thing ever, but it's a fine Sentai show if you just like if you want to see have a different flavor of Sentai in your like d Tokusatsu diet. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think of like all the things I said and the visuals you're seeing on Google Images? <laughs> Yeah, it looks uh, neat. I'll, I'm, I'll maybe I'll get to Caesar X next week. I already started it, but like I don't really have much to say other than this might be the best one. Mm -hmm. Uh, but might keyword because I know Caesar X got canceled, yeah. uh, and they had to like rush the finale, freaking Ultraman Nexus style. And then although there also no, like, I probably will also have to watch the Caesar X movie because they all the Grand Caesar, Justiceer, and Caesar X they all come together in that movie, and that's gonna be for uh as someone who's like been watching these shows in order. Uh, also, Just a Riser has a couple cameos from uh, Grand Caesar people. Like, there's one near the end which I really liked. Uh, from like, it was like one of the yellow guys, and he was a great character. Like, he was one of the better characters in Grand Caesar. So I liked what he did in Just a Riser as this kind of like freaking uh, Adam, like Adam to Carlos, and like that one in space episode. 
like they kind of pulled something like that. Yeah. So there, there's like there's a rule. I got oh, rewarded nice. for watching Grand Caesar before Justin Rowe. That's pretty. Um, there's not too many moments like that, but like. Hmm. Uh, that's kind of my entire Toho Star God ramble for the week. Um, uh, yeah, I'm. I like. I like Toku. I like all Toku. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. The Star God trilogy sounds interesting. It's definitely something I want to get I, to I eventually. But like, God, priority, there's I'd there's so much to all the other ones. Just because I think I just don't think you would find it too interesting, honestly. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've am i already got, like, all of Ultraman, a lot of Kamen Rider, most of Sentai, a little bit of Garo, yeah, and most I'd, of Metal I'd, Heroes I, like, left I'd probably, to watch. like, direct you to Change Your Honor, Dog Ed, or Voice Lugger first, uh, of, like, any, like, niche or toku. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a, that, that's a podcast, right? That is a podcast. That's a, that's a, that's a, like, roughly oh, two-hour podcast. We had a lot to say this week. Run plugs. Uh, uh, Buster, yeah, Buster, tell everybody where they can find you on the things. internet. I had released two videos recently. Uh, a video on a Persona love letter to... Ah, Persona's love letters to Sentai, Featherman, and uh, Goodbye Area Analysis. Please go watch them. I think they are neat, and you should think they're neat because I am craving validation. Also on Twitter, at Buster, if you want to see my 5 a.m. thoughts about videos. Yes, validate this person. Give them the good analytics. And give me the good analytics. I'm the Vacuumineer. I make YouTube videos about things, primarily tokusatsu, but also, like, other toy-based things and comics and hopefully more stuff going forward. I got a lot of plans to get into different topics as the year goes on. Uh, And you can see all of that, including... uh, My latest video dropping tomorrow, which is going to be my uh, first proper comic review in this new style. Uh, at youtube.com slash at the vacuuminator. Uh, I'm also on Twitter talking about every little thing that pops into my head until Elon Musk decides to finally nuke the platform for good. That's at the vacuuminator. And for when that happens, uh, I'm on Tumblr as a backup, the vacuuminator.tumblr.com. And I'm on Instagram posting pretty much daily action figure photography. Uh, and, uh, that is at the underscore vacuuminator. But, folks, that is it! That is everything that happened this week in Tokusatsu. So, thank you for listening. We'll see you right back here next week for whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.